Hi, this is Josh from Boost DBM. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use your cost model diagram to troubleshoot fallout in your cost model. So here I'm going to open the cost model metric and then select diagram from the drop down option. Now this opens up a visual representation of your cost model and shows all of the relationships between the objects and the allocations within your cost model. At the bottom of your cost model is the cost source object where cost is going into your model. Here you can see we have 4.7 million going into the model, and this is in the month of June 2019. So as I scroll up here, you can see how this 4.7 million is allocated throughout this model until eventually it reaches the top at business units. And in this case, 4.3 million of that amount makes it all the way through the model to the business units object. So we know we have about half a million in fallout throughout this model. Now, one of the great things with this cost model diagram is how easy it is to look for some of this fallout. If we select an object, we can easily see how much of that uh, cost within this object is allocated onto the next object. In the case of labor here, we can see that 100% of it is assigned. In the case of vendors, 100% of that is also assigned. If we select cost source here, we can see that there's a little bit of fallout here at this cost source object. And up here in this unassigned column, we can see 81,000 here is unassigned. And by scrolling to the left, we can learn a little bit about this fallout. So here you can see this is the unique identifier. This is the cost source master data set that backs this object. Here we can see it has a cost pool of outside services, a sub pool of managed service provider. Another cool thing about this is if I want to, I can bring in columns from the cost source master data set to look into this a little bit further. In this case, this is not something we would do here. Uh, we'll do it somewhere else. But if I was to trace uh, throughout the model, if I wanted to see where costs were going through the model, this would be very helpful. What we're going to do instead, though, is double click on the cost source object. And this takes us to the cost source modeled step where our allocations exist. So here's our fallout, this 81,000. So by selecting it, I can learn a little bit about it. Here's that unique identifier for it. And since this is of the cost source object, it's allocating costs through fixed assets, labor, vendors. So what I've done was I pulled in the necessary columns to look into this. We can see is depreciation is no, so we know it shouldn't be going to fixed assets. Is labor is no, so it shouldn't be going to the labor object. But is vendor is yes. So it's probably intended to go to uh, the vendor object. So let's grab this unique identifier. And we're going to go into our vendor allocation. And then by putting that unique identifier in here, we can isolate this specific cost and then in look into seeing why this is falling out. <clears throat> so here we can see the rules. For this allocation. The vendor ID is not null. In this case, that's true. Cost pool does not contain labor. That's also true. Cost sub pool does not contain depreciation. We're good there. Application ID is null. In this case, the application ID is not null. So this specific row is not intended to go through this allocation. It does not meet all of these rules that are uh, defined here. So let's close this and look down, we have another vendor's allocation here. So let's check this one. So if I put in that unique identifier again and look at these rules, vendor ID is not null, so that's true. Application ID is not null, so in this case, that's correct. And cost subpool does not contain depreciation, and we know that's true as well. So it does look like this row is intended to allocate through this allocation, but for some reason it's not. So let's scroll down further to look at the data relationships defined for this allocation between the source and the destination. So application ID and vendor ID are the two um, columns being used to create the relationship between the cost source master data set and the destination of the vendor master data set. 
so I copy the application ID and I prefer to copy and paste rather than trying to type it in manually because it's very easy to miss uppercase, lowercase, or characters, misspell something, and then not recognize when there is a match or is not a match. So I always do it this way as opposed to typing it in. So here we can see that there was an application ID that matched, but the vendor ID did not match. So that tells me in the vendor's master data set, it does not have this combination of application ID vendor ID may be there, and that vendor may be there, but it's just not there with this application. So to get this amount, this 81,000, to correctly allocate to the vendor's object, that's going to, the vendor master data set will need to be updated with this combination of vendor and application. And so that's um, kind of a simple, easy way to troubleshoot and look for fallout within your model, and then figuring out what to do with it. I uh, hope you found this helpful, and uh, if you have any questions, you can email me at jroberto at boosttbm.com. Thanks.